I'm Cheryl Bruno, and you're listening to Gospel Tangent. It's the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. Gospel Tangents is supported by users like you. Please support us at gospeltangents.com or on Patreon. I'm excited to have Cheryl Bruno back on the show. She's the editor of uh, Secret Covenants, New Insights into Mormon Polygamy. And so we're going to learn a lot about uh, the latest research on polygamy. So uh, let's take it away with Cheryl. Welcome to Gospel Tangents. I'm excited to have a very busy author. You've got two new books out. We're going to talk about uh, the green one. So go ahead and tell us who you are and you're the author of what? I'm Cheryl Bruno, and the newest book I have out is called Secret Covenants. Right there. All right. And it's about early Mormon polygamy. All right. So tell us more about it. It's a, it's it's kind of an anthology where every you've got a bunch of different authors that write about it. So do, we'd just like to do a little bit of an overview here. So give us an overview of the Great. book. Great. Well, I'm the editor of this book, and I'll tell you the story of how it came about. Um, Gary Bergera from Signature Books um, contacted me about two years ago. Since then, he's retired. But um, he contacted me and said, um, we'd love for you to pull together a book on polygamy and just um, gather together a few essays that have already been written and we'll put them together into a book. And I thought to myself, you know, I know a bunch of editor, or I know a bunch of authors on early Mormon polygamy, and I bet that I can get them all to write something new and interesting for this book. So I did. I called Don Bradley, Tom, Todd Compton, who just won the best documentary award in MHA? There you by go. The way. Um, Todd Compton just won at MHA. We're here at MHA, and he just won the best documentary um, book, um, which for his um, In Sacred Loneliness, the documents. Right. So he's one of our well known authors on polygamy. And we have um, Susan Staker, um, William V. Smith, oh, just so many. And then we have actually. Two new authors in this book as well, um, who Rick will be interviewing and let everybody know about um, Marianne Clements and Mark Tensmeyer. I think this is their first published um, article, but though I think I haven't mentioned Christopher C. Smith, and I know I've probably missed somebody. <laughs> yeah, we can look at the table of contents, I guess. We don't want to leave anybody out. We don't. Um, so we have Claire Barris. And Christopher C. Smith, Don Bradley, Susan Staker, John Dinger, Todd Todd Compton, um, Devery Anderson. I don't know if we mentioned Devery. No, we didn't mention Devery. He's also done a lot. An award-winning author. Mm -hmm. We have several award-winning authors here, and um, and William Victor Smith, and then our new ones, Mark Tensmeyer and Marianne Clements. So it's just an amazing lineup. And they've all written me some original things here. Well, you forgot one. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I have an essay in the book as well. And, of course, I have written on polygamy. And um, so we've um, we've come up with some new insights. Very, very new insights. So I love, this is just going to be a, a quick overview one of the nice things about an anthology is you don't have to start at the beginning and go to the end. You can kind of skip around. Exactly. And so I've, I've, I've done that. And so I wanted to read Mark and Claire. They kind of covered the same time period from two different points of view. Tell us about that. Okay. So um, first I'll just say that um, right now we have a big controversy going on in the polygamy studies world um, about whether Joseph Smith actually practiced polygamy or not. And there's pushback on that. And this book was not written, um, this, since it started about two years ago, we didn't write the book to respond to that. But it just so happens that some of the essays do kind of respond to it. And right before it went to press, we just kind of edited, uh, Mark, um, edited his, um, chapter real quick and made it a little bit more updated. And so his essay in particular responds to this question. Did Joseph Smith practice polygamy? And he did such a great job at addressing that. And um, so it's very current and very apropos to what's going on right now. Yeah. Well, not only that, but Claire talked about the revelations that Joseph had as early as 1831. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, yeah. And um, the 1831 revelation, I don't think Claire 
um, really, he discusses it, but I don't think he really includes it in a polygamy, necessarily a polygamy right. document, but he does discuss it and tell why, what he, his analysis of that. And then he also talks about since Joseph, um, was known to have said that he had the polygamy, uh, revelation when he revealed, um, section 132, he said he had already had, um, polygamy revealed to him before that time. So Claire has gone back and investigated what those documents were, what revelations that those could refer to. And he came up with quite a few, the, the revelation that Joseph Smith had received, um, kind of pulled it from here and there. And so that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. I haven't read the chapter. I haven't liked yet. So <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about Don Bradley because he, tries to date the Fanny Alger uh, episode. Uh, it's as early as 1833. Don late to, dates it later than anybody else. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. So um, this is actually something he's done work on for years. I think he presented at a conference one time where he actually used the title Dating Fanny Alger, which yes. is really cute. I intended but, that. <laughs> yes, I did too. I was there. Yeah. Um, but since then, he's done more, much more research on that. And he's gotten it down. He's narrowed it down very closely to when he thinks the Fanny Alger incident occurred. And um, it he talks about, I mean, he really, really digs down. And I think I've heard Don say that if you can put something into chronological order, you can really understand the history of it. And so that's what he tries to do in this article is he tries to, or this chapter, he tries to date these things. And it's a little bit difficult to do because some of the uh, sources and the documents that we have on Fanny Alger are, you know, um, late or there's problems with them. And he, he acknowledges that in his chapter. But I think he uses them quite well, and I think that you'll really feel that he has come very close to um, a, a correct date on that. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense because, you know, Oliver Cowdery was excommunicated in 1937 because of the dirty, nasty, filthy affair slash <laughs> right. Um And Don goes into a lot of detail on why, uh, the, anyway, they kind of refer to the same thing, but... Um, but it kind of makes sense if it's 1836 that the incident, I'll just call it that, mm -hmm. the incident in the barn happened. Um, it makes sense that Oliver would be maybe talking about that in 1837 when Joseph wasn't very happy about that. So chronologically, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. I, I yes, really and do. he uses things like when Joseph Smith leaves town, you know, different things like that where, you know, who was in town at the at the time, who was living next to who, and Many things like this that he uses in his analysis. Yeah. And, you know, I got to tell you, um, so I asked everyone to give me about 50 pages in their, in their chapters. So I didn't want more than 50 pages. And Don, you know, took quite a long time. And then he submitted me something that was 80 pages long on this subject. And I kept saying, Don, it can't be 80 pages. It's got to be less. You got to cut it some more. You got to cut it some more. So he really has, you know, he's, synthesizes and he's made it very tight and it's i think it's exciting reading to read it but you know he's had a lot of information on it so. yeah well let's talk a little bit about your chapter you talked about emma smith's den public denials about polygamy tell us right, about that so right. I, I well before you do i will just preview a little bit that uh there were some prizes there yes and you know let me just say that some of these essays um do have some real surprises, and that's why we call it New Insights on Early Mormon Polygamy, and um, particularly the chapter that Don and Chris Smith have done together um, presents the Fanny Alger affair in a way that I have never read before, and so it is brand new, it's controversial, it's exciting, and so a lot of these articles are like that. Um, so for mine, um, I'm building on the work of the late Johnny Stevenson. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted to um, show that Emma did not participate in any of the plural marriages. And I know that we do hear that there is a possibility that that Emma placed the hand of the wives into the hand of Joseph's or, you know, in other ways, um, uh, 
allowed Joseph or gave him permission to marry people. But um, Johnny Stevenson objected to that. And he had some really good research showing that that Emma may not have participated in these plural marriages. So and he passed away a while ago, and um, I didn't have his research on it, but um, he and I had discussed it. So I had some of his sources, and so I want to give you know acknowledge him for that you know kind of the idea he had behind it, and I want to get it out because I didn't know of anyone else who was working on it. So we know that Emma denied. Um, very strongly that she uh, that Joseph had ever participated or taught polygamy. So I wanted to dig into that and see what the denials were, you know, where, um, how late they were, where who they were coming from. And so I talk about that first, and then I talk about whether she participated and kind of the dating on that. And then I conclude by giving three possibilities of why she may have denied polygamy. Um, And because this was written before the controversy of whether Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, I just assume that he did and that she's denying something that happened. And I may have gone a little bit of a different direction if um, I had realized this would become such an issue. (laughs) But for the time being, I just, I assume that Joseph did practice polygamy. And if he did, then why would Emma, what might be some reasons why Emma would deny it so strongly? Okay. So, because you don't, you you still think Joseph practiced polygamy? Yes, I absolutely do. I believe he did. But the question of whether Emma participated in the ceilings, you come to believe that she has not. Yes, I think we have stronger evidence that she did not um, participate that in that. And um, the interesting thing is that Andy Ehat wrote a thesis on um, uh, quite, I mean, everybody loves Andy Ehat's thesis. And what he said was that um, in order to receive um, her ordinances, that Emma had to, um, to acquiesce to plural marriage. And so everyone who's written about that has followed Andy and just kind of cited him and not done any new research, but just um, followed what he said about that. But I'm going to push back against that a little bit. And the reason why is because of my work on William Marks. Um, it seems that William Marks never um, it came to accept plural marriage, but he did receive higher ordinances, you know? So if he did, perhaps Emma might have as well. Which leads into a whole new book on William Marks. Yes. <laughs> I don't have a copy of that one yet. Okay. <laughs> yes, so um, within a month, these two books have come out. The, You're a busy the book lady. I edited and also a biography that I did with John Dinger on William Marks. Okay. Can you give us a little snippet on that one or look like? Oh, well, I just have become so enamored with this early church figure, and yet, People just don't know very much about him. Yeah, he's I, in the RLDS tradition. We didn't need to put No, but, but he was so involved in Nauvoo. And um, so I, um, I, when I gave a talk today in, in MHA about William Marks, and I asked people in the audience if they had heard of William Marks. And since they're all Mormon historians, they had heard of William Marks. Most Mormons have not heard of him. But these people had. And then I said, Raise your hand if you know more than three facts about William Marks, and nobody in the room did. So I asked if they knew two facts. There was one gentleman who knew two facts about William Marks. But I think there's a real need for this biography because he was such an important figure. And yet, because Brigham Young found him a challenge to his leadership, he just kind of erased him from history and pushed him out. And um, we've, we've kind of just forgotten about him. In our tradition. Hmm. All right. Well, we're just doing a quick overview. It was great to get together with Cheryl. But uh, uh, I will say this. Uh, sh- why don't you show the camera the book again? Cheryl has signed her chapter, as has Marianne Clements and Blair Claire Barris. And so we're going to give away a free copy of Secret Covenants. So... Go to gospeltangents.com slash contest, and you could win a copy. We're going to try to get a lot of uh, people to interview 
to talk about this. Um, do you have any final words for? You're going to love this book. I'm telling you, there are new insights you may not agree, and if you don't, I'd love to hear about that. But um, but you, you want to give be your email address? Yes, I will <laughs> give my email address. It's c l bruno at gmail. Okay. All right. So uh, all the all the disagreements can go to Cheryl. There we go. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, Cheryl, for giving us an introduction to Secret Covenants. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Cheryl Bruno, the editor of Secret Covenants, New Insights on Early Mormon Polygamy. So the cool thing is I'm actually going to be giving away a, a copy of this to uh, one of you listeners. So go to gospeltangents.com slash contest. And I will give away, so far I've had Cheryl sign it, Claire Barris, and Marianne Clements. And so I'm excited to give away one of these. Um, so it'll be an autographed copy. So uh, that'll be super fun. In our next conversation, we're going to talk to Marianne Clements, and she's going to talk about uh, Theodore Turley and his three wives who were sisters. And it's partly because of the way that um, the family was recorded so um, we later family members actually kind of backdated the marriage based on the birth of a child, which when you look into the actual historical records, it it's was crazy. actually, it was a child of someone else. And so, but they just assumed it was Theodore's child, partly because of how it was recorded. Right. But and it's so, a crazy story too. It is a crazy story. <laughs> um, Thanks for listening. And I hope you to continue to enjoy Gospel Tangents. Consider becoming a Patreon or go to gospeltangents.com slash shop and you can get a cool tie, a hat, or even a nice mug. You can also get a sweatshirt. So check it out at gospeltangents.com shop.